Alright. So I got set up with my ankle punch. So do some punch work. On this thing. Too worried yet about setting up decent um, that diamond shape convexity yet. I'm trying not to push my flakes too far past the midline because obviously that's going to help later. But I still got quite a bit of thickness that I need to get rid of. So. A little bit past midline or midway, but not crazy. Also using the little one. The big one just drives too much power into the stuff. It just the stuff just wants to flake. it in a little bit better into this area. So I've got this turtle back thing going on here. And I've got a nice ridge that runs into it. So I'm going to see if I can Starting to get right through here, like a little bit, because these flakes are kind of curling over. So I don't know if you can actually see that. I think you can, but it's 
those those flakes aren't flat, they're actually curling over. Like by no means am I gonna say that I am an expert at doing this, but I made a copy of a Finn Clovis the other day. And to be honest with you, I don't know how I do it, but I've kind of figured out that because the Finn Clovis has these oblique um, edge to edge flakes, and the cast is pretty convex, and it kind of boggled me at first how they did that to save that convexity while having the edge to edge flaking. But I kind of discovered how to do that by odd accident. accident. But if you ask me to explain to you how I do it, there's no way I would be able to. I, I honestly, I don't know. I can't do it if I need to, but don't ask me how to explain it. need to get some of this white for space. So I'm going to run a flake all along this crap. So I've got a nice ridge, somewhat of a platform in the back set up. So hopefully I don't snap this thing in half. And I've got it supported in the back of my hand here, all along the inside there. Plus, my fingers on the edge, not in the middle, so I don't put any bending pressure on it. Got it. There's another little spot right there. I'm trying to preserve my center line through here. Like I don't want to flatten this out with these basal thinning flakes. So then I can, because I've still got quite a bit of width here, because this point is only going to be like, I don't know, five, maybe six eighths of an inch wide. So fairly narrow point. So these will be easy enough because I've still got width here to run flakes up into this area here to keep that sort of center ridge line going and the, the whole reason I'm doing this and making these haskets is because I'm actually kind of practicing to do that to make like a real solid center ridge line running through it because I want to make a Cumberland point at some point no pun intended. I hate it when people say that. Anyway, so I'm trying to practice setting my preforms up like that so I can run those really nice flutes all the way down. I haven't tried to flute this stuff from tip to tip. I honestly. I probably will be able to do it, but I haven't tried it yet, but I'm just trying to get into the habit of setting, ooh, that was a pretty flake, of setting up these really steep central, central ridges. I'm talking so much. I just think caskets are a good platform to practice this on.
started watching a show recently on TV, or not on TV, on the internet, because I don't have a TV, on Amazon, called Yellowstone, because I've always been a Kevin Costner fan, and man alive, am I enjoying that show, that's good. If you haven't seen it and you're into like sort of western cowboy style shows and movies, I definitely would recommend that. That is awesome. I need to dress my tool. I don't know if you guys can will be able to see this, but I've got these oblique flakes going towards the center and they're kind of like like interlocking almost like something like that so one on top one underneath one like and that just kind of is starting to set up this ridge down the middle because I'm, I'm putting my fingers when I'm doing this I've got a finger back there to stop the flake short so it doesn't curl over or run too far and they're not stepping either they're feathering out so I'm kind of just like when I've got my fingers I've got one just holding the back there I don't know if that's actually a technique but it seems to be working for me so normally if you have your finger in a spot like that it, you end up stepping okay, I'm not going to do it here I'm just going to put pressure in the back. Come on. Where I have my finger pressure right in the back there. Okay, that's way too low. If you guys ever end up making one of these, I recommend watching one of Marty one of Flint Napping Tips videos here on YouTube because the way I'm doing it with this is like a, a dowel from Home Depot or from Lowe's actually. And he specifically said do not use that, but it's all I had and it's all I have for now. I would seriously recommend, I mean this has got a little bit of flex to it for when I need it, but it's definitely not right, I can just feel it's not right, but it works for me and I think I've gotten used to what it does and does not do, I'm scared if I change it now, but going to throw me off and I won't be able to do anything. Okay, how many minutes is this now? 15, okay, I'm going to stop it here and restart.